Hello students, welcome to Target AES. I am going to start the very first module of our waste water treatment. Okay, so I hope you are perfect in drinking water treatment, right? If you have any doubt, how small it might be, you can ask me in my group, WhatsApp group. I will definitely clear it. Now let us start this topic, waste water treatment. See, what we have done in drinking water. If I have some source, let us say river. I took water from this river. And obviously the water which I am taking from this river will have certain parameters, physical parameters like total solids or turbidity and then chemical parameters like hardness, alkalinity, etc. And then we have biological parameters like MPN. So what we used to do? We used to treat for it. How to treat? We have a drinking water treatment plant. Okay. And this drinking water treatment plant follows what which code book it follows is 10500 in that clearly specifications are given up to what permissible limit you have to treat so that you can supply this water to the people agreed so as per is 10500 or in some cases cphe evo standards our drinking water treatment plants treat our water and send it to the nearby town a okay now what is happening to this water okay I have told you in the drinking water, even the lower income group people, though garib hote na, even they consume in India 135 LPCD, liter per capita per day. So every day each individual is roughly consuming 135 liters in India. What is happening to this water? Okay. Uh, is it a magic? Once you are using, it is getting just, it is going out, no right? Where is this water going? Obviously, when you're flushing the water, when you're taking the shower or when you're washing vegetables or clothes, all this water is being sent into our drainage system, agreed or not? Okay, into our sewers. Okay, and these sewers take this water to nearby wastewater treatment plant, wastewater treatment plant. From here, we have to treat it again to some permissible standards. Obviously, drinking water standards jitne hai nahi rehega. Okay. We have some flexible standards. The standards which are not that strict as drinking water standards because in drinking water standards, we have to consume this water, right? And we are not consuming this wastewater treatment plant uh, directly water, right? So, the standards are little bit flexible compared to that of drinking water. We treat it and then we send it back into nature or you can say the same source of water okay this wastewater treatment plant is very important if you don't have it obviously it might cause lot of diseases to human beings not only human beings it might cause a huge damage to nature aquatic life pura mar ja sakta hai there is a chance that even entire aquatic life in the nearby region might vanish I hope you are getting this point right. What is the importance of wastewater treatment plant? Now, what is the water which is entering this wastewater treatment plant? Let us try to understand. See, obviously, whatever domestic water was there, it is being collected and sent to your wastewater treatment plant. In general, in general, 90% of the water, whatever you were consuming, right, it will be uh, coming back to wastewater treatment plant. Okay, it will be coming to wastewater treatment plant remaining 10 percent it will be losses it will be losses it might be the percolation losses or it could be the evaporation 10 percent will be gone and 90 percent of the water which you consume right it will be going to wastewater treatment plant so far clear right so what is the water which is going into wastewater treatment plant definitely the water from domestic households okay so i'm calling this as domestic sewage the sewage which is coming from domestic activities like washing, cooking, bathing, etc. I am calling it as domestic sewage. Okay. What else? I will be having some industries agreed. I will be having certain amount of industries. So the water which is coming from these industries is also taken into to our wastewater treatment plant. So this water I am calling it as industrial sewage. Okay. So domestic sewage plus industrial sewage. Now there is one more other source. What is that source? See, if in any town, if you have seen, if there is any rainfall, what will happen to this rainwater? Will it stay on roads only? Okay, no right. So the roads will be constructed in a slope such a way that this water is being collected in the drains and is being carried out. Okay, agreed or not? So this water which is coming because of the rainfall, we are calling it as storm water or storm water drainage up to you. Okay. I hope concept is clear. So what is the input water to the wastewater treatment plant? It is from domestic sewage, industrial sewage and storm water. So far concept is clear. 
सी द वॉटर विच एवर यू आर गेटिंग इन वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट प्लांट राइट बहुत बदबू मारती है इट विल बी स्मेली एंड दिस वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट प्लांट राइट इट इज द स्मेलीएस्ट पार्ट ऑफ आवर सिविल इंजीनियरिंग स्मेलीएस्ट स्मेलीएस्ट बहुत बदबू आता है बहुत बदबू आता है यू नो इट राइट वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट प्लांट स्टिंक्स वाई डज इट स्टिंक्स कॉमन सेंस की बात है वेन यू हैव एनी ऑर्गेनिक सब्सटेंस वाई डू यू हैव ऑर्गेनिक सब्सटेंस लेट एस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज सीवेज वॉट इज सीवेज वेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट सीवेज राइट इट इज नाइंटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट वाटर इट सेल्फ ओके नाइंटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट वाटर इट सेल्फ बट द रेस्ट वॉट एवर यू हैव पॉइंट वन परसेंट दैट विल बी सॉलिड्स दैट विल बी सॉलिड्स दिस सॉलिड्स कैन बी ऑर्गेनिक सॉलिड्स और इनऑर्गेनिक सॉलिड्स इफ यू हैव इनऑर्गेनिक सॉलिड्स देन नॉट अ बिग डील बट वेन वी हैव दिस ऑर्गेनिक सॉलिड्स डेफिनेटली ऑर्गेनिक सॉलिड्स विल बी देर राइट सो दिस ऑर्गेनिक सॉलिड्स वॉट विल हैपन लेट एस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इफ यू हैव एनी ऑर्गेनिक सब्सटेंस इन नेचर what will happen there will be certain decomposers which are very active in nature agree dot not so they will try to decompose it okay the same concept is with dead body also right dead body also decomposes not only dead body take some water yaar and add milk to it okay or just take normal milk and keep it outside just keep it outside your home for 2 or 3 days then go and take the smell how it will be it will be very pungent right very pungent why because the decomposition has already started in that milk i hope concept is clear why wherever you have this organic substances the decomposers will try to decompose it what are these decomposers there are some microorganisms in nature which consume their food which get their food by consuming this organic substances as simple as that then why are we getting smell see when this microorganisms are trying to eat this obviously there will be some by products released right so that will have sulfur and not only sulfur there are many other substances also but mainly sulfur so because of it you will be getting that bad smell at the same time this sulfur is the reason why you will be having this water grayish if you ever see a waste water treatment plant water it will be little grayish right apna drain bhi dekh lena apna drain bhi dekh lena khol ke how it will be it will be little bit grayish only it will not be in the color of our drinking water agreed okay it is mainly because of sulfur and also other by products now let us try to understand what is happening or in our waste water treatment plant see i have taken this photo uh, my own i have taken this photo this is the entrance of waste water treatment plant okay entrance of our waste water treatment plant the water from here is being taken to a screening chamber screening the same screening which we have studied in our drinking water dekhiye the layout of our drinking water and waste water will be very much similar okay but there are some extra things added in our waste water treatment plant like grit chamber secondary sedimentation tank and even anaerobic digester in some cases we will study in detail chapter abhi kafi bada hai yaar detail se padhai karenge but this is how the water looks like okay can you see how grayish it is okay it is very much grayish to dark black okay black to grayish color ke beech mein rahega apna sewage okay and i have visited lot of waste water treatment plants in india and even abroad okay so i have visited so many countries you might be already knowing that i am an environmental engineer I, okay my bachelor's is civil engineering but i have done masters in environmental engineering and i have worked extensively after my graduation i have worked in solid waste management okay so i have worked in solid waste management for 6 months i have told you this is the smelliest part of civil engineering right वो इसके सामने छोटा बच्चा है द स्मेल विच यू गेट इन सॉलिड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट प्लांट्स राइट यू कैनॉट गेट इट एनी वेयर एल्स यू हैव टू एक्सपीरियंस इट ओके सो इतना बदबू आता है तीन बार चार बार पानी भी नहा लो खरा कर फिर भी स्किन से वो बदबू नहीं जाएगा रियली द पीपल हु वर्क इन अवर सॉलिड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट प्रोग्राम्स राइट सेल यू टू देम आई विल शो यू पिक्चर्स हाउ द सॉलिड वेस्ट प्रोग्राम्स लुक्स लाइक ओके बट दिस इज हाउ वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट प्लान लुक्स लाइक ओके दिस इज सम Uh, somewhere in singapore if i am not wrong so this is how waste water treatment plant looks like i have taken this photo the water is coming inside you can see how grayish it is and this green color kuch fancy sa dikh raha hai na kuch fancy sa dikh raha hai na this is nothing but settling chamber okay this is nothing but settling chamber actually it has green roof that's why the because of the sunlight whatever you are getting whatever seeing right it is in green color but actually it will be in grayish color itself okay so it has some roofs like this so what happened the water is looking little bit green here but actually it will be grayish only okay so i will show more pictures more videos of wastewater treatment plant not a big deal 
Now let us continue with this topic. As the name of chapter suggests, quality and characteristics of sewage. Let us see what are the various characteristics of sewage. Similar to that of drinking water, we also have physical characteristics, chemical and biological characteristics. Let us study them in detail. Okay. So first one is physical wastewater characteristics. There is absolutely no difference between physical characteristics of drinking water and wastewater. ठीक है सो जो भी हम वहां पे पढ़े थे टोटल सॉलिड सेटलेबल सॉलिड डिजोल्व सॉलिड एंड सस्पेंडेड सॉलिड सी सेटलेबल सॉलिड इट डिड इन केम इन आवर ड्रिंकिंग वाटर ओके सो रेस्ट टोटल सॉलिड डिजोल्व सॉलिड सस्पेंडेड सॉलिड द कॉन्सेप्ट इज सेम एज ड्रिंकिंग वाटर लेट मी रिवाइज यू ओके आई हैव नॉट गिवन इन नोट्स बिकॉज वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर इन आवर टॉपिक ऑफ ड्रिंकिंग वाटर बट लेट मी रिवाइज यू वंस वॉट इज दिस टोटल सॉलिड्स सी बेसिकली इन ड्रिंकिंग वाटर ऑल्सो देर कैन बी दिस ऑर्गेनिक सॉलिड्स एंड इनऑर्गेनिक सॉलिड्स इन आवर वाटर राइट so we are taking it as total solids based on size i am classifying this total solids into suspended solids suspended solids colloids colloids and dissolved solids dissolved solids suspended solids are the solids which have the size in the range of 10 to the power of minus 1 to 10 to the power of minus 3 mm okay so colloids are in the range of 10 to the power of minus 3 to 10 to the power of minus 6 mm okay and dissolved solids if the size is less than 10 to the power of minus 6 mm we call it as dissolved solids so small that we are considering it as dissolved in water okay i hope you are getting what is this dissolved solids right and uh, these suspended solids we call it as non filterable solids very important bit log confuse ho jate hain non filterable and filterable mein see when you are keeping a filter paper filter paper will be like a very fine mesh okay so what is happening when you are uh, keeping the water when you are uh, making the water pass through this filter so what is happening this suspended solids right it will retain on my filter it is not passing through my filter that's why it is called as non filterable solids non filterable solids but this dissolved solids it will definitely pass through my filter paper that's why it is called as filterable solids dissolved solids or filterable solids okay i hope every concept of yours is revised now related to total solids i hope you also know how to measure total solids ek bar reverse kar lete take certain amount of your waste water let us say 1 liter just for experiment just for experiment i am taking 1 liter of waste water okay so what i have i have 1 liter of waste water in this total solids is also present in this total solids is also present what you have to do very simple just heat it to 100 degree centigrade or to be precise heat it to 104 degree centigrade i hope you remember in drinking water what will happen all your water will be evaporated what is left only your total solids Weight this total solids and you will be getting how much total solids are present in your one liter. Let us say ten. Ah, uh, let us say hundred mg was present. Let us say hundred mg of your total solids were present in one liter. Okay. So if you know quantity of waste water, you can multiply it and know how much total solids is present in our waste water. Agreed or not? Okay. Now comes the very important question. This is total solids well and good. What is the component of organic solids and inorganic solids? Are you are same concept as drinking water? Ka yaar lalo. What you have to do to find organic content or inorganic content? Heat this to 600 degrees. Heat your total solids to 600 degrees. So when you are heating to 600, right? Whatever organic content was present, right? It will get completely oxidized and it will be getting vaporized. Actually, okay? It will be vaporized. Gaib ho jayega. Okay? It will be completely vanished. So what is left? only inorganic content will be present okay so you just weigh this let us say if total solids is 100 grams weigh this you will be getting inorganic solids let us say the weight is 60 grams so 60 mg now what will be the weight of your organic solids the weight of your organic solids will be 100 minus 60 which will be 40 mg so you have around 40 mg of organic content in 1 liter of water concept is clear perfect so far okay that is how you can measure your total solids organic content and inorganic content in your water okay now let us continue with this topic and here i have given couple of notes please uh, make a note very important bit especially for small examinations see if you are watching this video there is a high chance you already know this bit we will study this bits in detail also but let us see here itself once okay organic particles decomposed by biological action and chemical action see i have discussed so far how 
your organic particles or organic content is being decomposed by microorganisms right but we can also decompose it or we can oxidize it using certain chemicals what are they we will study it okay we will study it in the next module itself okay so our organic matter can be decomposed both by biological action and chemical action if biological action is being carried out if this biological action is being carried out with the help of these microorganisms so if your biological action is being carried out in the presence of oxygen we call it as aerobic degradation or aerobic decomposition aerobic decomposition if you are doing this in absence absence means no oxygen no oxygen is there if you are performing this biological degradation we will be calling it as anaerobic anaerobic decomposition okay when i am doing this anaerobic decomposition my end products are very good i will be getting methane here i will be getting very stable end products like co2 h2o not that important but here instead of co2 i am getting ch4 methane okay methane se kya kar sakte hai energy produce kar sakte hai therefore anaerobic is really good you might ask me sir why don't all waste water treatment plants go for anaerobic digestion aisa nahi ho sakta hai okay because you have to construct for anaerobic digestion i will show you i will show you this is anaerobic tank which i have seen uh, somewhere i don't remember this like four year old photo but definitely not in india so what happened is uh, you have to see this much anaerobic tank you have to construct first of all if you are doing this for waste water treatment plant okay for waste water treatment plant you will be getting so much waste agreed to aapko itna bada construction banana padega okay i hope you are getting right i hope you are getting this point so more the amount of waste water bigger your structure will become and it is not economically feasible to hum nahi jayenge is pe and the energy production from our domestic waste water if from industries it is a different issue but if you are going for domestic waste water right uska organic content itna powerful nahi rehta so not that much amount of energy will be produced but if you have some industrial waste i am pretty much sure i have taken this photo nearby sugar industry okay sugar industry ke aas pass liya tha mujhe yaad nahi hai roughly okay so uh, near sugar industry what happens is uh, at sugar industry you will be using sugar cane right उसका जो बैगैस मिलेगा ओके okay, मोलासेस जो भी बचेगा दिट हैज हाई अमाउंट ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक कंटेंट ओके सो व्हेन यू आर डीकम्पोजिंग इट यू विल बी गेटिंग अ वेरी हाई क्वालिटी ऑफ सी एच फोर मीथेन एंड यू विल बी गेटिंग इलेक्ट्रिसिटी प्रोड्यूस्ड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस मीथेन ओके सो एनारोबिक डाइजेशन वी डोंट गो ऑलमोस्ट एवरीवेयर ओके वी विल बी गोइंग ओनली एट स्पेसिफाइड प्लेसेस लाइक इंडस्ट्रीज विच डील विथ फूड प्रोसेसिंग और ब्रीवेरीज ब्रीवेरीज मीन्स यू आई होप यू नो रेट जो शराब बनाते हैं इन दिस एरियाज बेसिकली एन एरोबिक प्लांट विल बी देर बट कैन यू गो एस ऑफकोर्स यू कैन गो फॉर डोमेस्टिक ऑल्सो बट इकोनॉमिकली फिजिबल नहीं होता है ओके आई होप यू आर गेटिंग दिस पॉइंट नाउ दिस पॉइंट यू ऑलरेडी नो सी वेज कंसिस्ट ऑफ सी इन द बिगिनिंग आई हैव टोल्ड यू नाइनटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट वाटर एंड पॉइंट वन परसेंट सॉलिड्स और लेस दैन पॉइंट वन परसेंट सॉलिड्स इट वॉज नॉट फ्लूक ओके इट इज अ रियल वैल्यू इट कैन बी आस्कड इन एग्जाम्स ऑल्सो ओके वॉट इज द परसेंटेज ऑफ सॉलिड्स इन अवर वेस्ट वाटर ऑप्शन कैन बी गिवेन इट विल बी जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन परसेंट जीरो पॉइंट वन परसेंट वन परसेंट एक्चुअली दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन विच वॉज आस्कड इन एस एस सी जे टेन so what is your option your option is 0.1% less than 0.1% yaad rakh lena theek hai see total solids you know dissolved solids you know you know suspended solids what is the settleable solids nya term is settleable solids see obviously in your waste water you will be having little bit of heavy objects right waste water hai bhai organic content to zyada rahega okay Uh, the waste content will be little bit more compared to that of drinking water so obviously we are getting a new parameter which is called as settleable solids what we are doing is we are taking im half cone this is called as im uh, im half cone theek okay? hai so it will be just a triangle on this if i zoom it you will be clearly seeing that it is a 1 liter cone it is a 1 liter cone can you see it 1 liter cone hai in this you will be filling waste water up to this mark ओके यू विल बी मिक्सिंग द वेस्ट वाटर वेल एंड टेकिंग द सैंपल ओके सो जो भी सॉलिड रहेगा वो क्या करेगा विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू टाइम इट विल बी सेटलिंग डाउन इन दिस कॉन अग्रेड सो यू विल बी गेटिंग व्हाट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ 
settleable solids present in your one liter solution. Okay, in your one liter solution. Basically, the time which will be given for objects to settle will be two hours. That is also one important bit. So, what we are using to find out settleable solids, we will be using Imhoff cone, and water is allowed to settle in this Imhoff cone for 120 minutes or two hours, and we will be measuring how much solids have been settled in this one liter solution. Okay. I hope concept is clear, right? Now let us continue with chemical waste water quality parameters. Let me let me take this photo out. Yeah, chemical waste water quality parameters. I will teach dissolved oxygen and then I will stop. Okay, dissolved oxygen. If you understand today, in module, we can understand COD, BOD, THOD, everything in detail. Dissolved oxygen is very important. See, it is a very well established fact that. Most of the living organisms in this world, okay. Most I'm saying, most I'm not saying every living microorganisms, okay. There are few which can survive without oxygen, also, okay. But most they require oxygen for respiration purpose, they require oxygen for metabolism of body and to survive, okay. And aquatic animals are no exception, it can be. Aquatic plants, it can be fishes, it doesn't matter, they also require oxygen to survive. Okay, there are only very few microorganisms which can survive without free oxygen. Okay, they are taking oxygen from the bonded form and these microorganisms are responsible for our anaerobic digestion. Okay, but these are very rare. These are very few in nature, but most of the living organisms, they require oxygen. Agreed. So, in water, these plants or these fishes, how are they surviving? From where they are getting this oxygen? See, the water will have certain amount of solubility. The oxygen, whichever is there, right, it will be dissolved in my water. Okay. And this oxygen, I am calling it as dissolved oxygen. And because of this dissolved oxygen, my aquatic life is surviving. I hope concept is clear. And this dissolved oxygen is function of temperature. Yad rakhna, very important bit hai. Okay. It is a function of temperature. If temperature is more, my dissolved oxygen will be less. They are inversely related. If temperature is more, my dissolved oxygen will be less and what uh, what are the values some values you have to remember at zero degree centigrade if there is no pollution in water i mean if there is no uh, any organic substance in water then my dissolved oxygen at zero degree centigrade will be 14.2 to 14.6 okay 14.2 to 14.6 mg per liter and second most important bit is at 20 degree centigrade my duo sat duo saturation or duo without any organic content in that water my duo will be 9.17 mg per liter roughly around 9.2 mg per liter very important okay or you can also write for 15 degree centigrade because in most of the western world average temperature is taken as 15 degrees so 15 degrees is equal to 10 at 15 degree centigrade my duo will be around 10 mg per liter Okay, these three values you have to remember. Please do correct. Notes me when I 4 degree lick diya tha by mistake. It is actually 15 degree. Okay, you can see the table here if you want to remember more values. Well and good. But for now, remember these three values for objective purpose in examination. Okay, so if there is any value less than 9.17 at 20 degree centigrade, basically in India the temperature standard temperature is around 27. But let us generalize. Let us take some area on which the temperature is around 20 degrees centigrade okay so you should have a do of 9.17 in water but instead of 9.17 if you are seeing something like 7 or 6 then what does it mean that means there is some organic content present in our water because of this organic content what is happening obviously organic content should be decomposed what are they decomposing microorganisms are decomposing so these microorganisms which are feeding on this uh, food their food organic content so they required oxygen to survive agreed or not okay so they are quickly taking devo from the rest of water so what is happening the devo levels in water are failing rapidly I hope concept is clear, right? Because these microorganisms have to survive. They multiply also, right? Microorganisms multiply. If they have enough food, I will draw diagrams and show a log growth diagram, how the bacteria multiply itself. So what is happening? Uh, more the organic content, more more bacteria will be produced and faster rate they will be consuming oxygen. Okay. So what is happening? Your DO value will be falling. So, if there is any deficiency in DO, that indicates there is pollution. Okay. 
I hope the concept is clear, right? If there is any deficiency compared to the values which I have just discussed above, then it definitely indicates there is certain amount of pollution in that water. Okay, if there is less DO, what will happen? Obviously, my aquatic life is at risk. If I have high DO, then also it is a problem. I have just given in a bracket. This is not a related concept, but this is a important bit for ESC. Even if you have a high DO, it will be a problem. Not for aquatic life. It is good for aquatic life. How much DO you, you give, it doesn't matter. It will be good. But if you are carrying this water, okay, if you are carrying this water in pipes. this devo will be bad because corrosion will happen what is corrosion yaar if you are taking water in iron pipes basically you will be taking cast iron only right so fe reacts with oxygen and form fe2o3 fe2o3 is nothing but my corrosion component right i hope you are getting this point so if the devo content is very high the corrosion can happen in pipes also this is also one of the bit it can be asked see how much minimum do you have to keep so that it will not affect your uh, it will not affect your aquatic life that is 4 ppm 4 ppm yani 4 mg per liter i hope you remember the conversions right so minimum 4 ppm do or 4 mg per liter do is required at all temperatures whatever temperature it is okay at 27 degree centigrade let us say around 25 degrees it is already 8.6 so what is happening if it is falling by any 5 points okay if your do is falling by 5 points less than 4 ho gaya na then your aquatic life is at risk okay your aquatic life is at risk so we have to design our water treatment plan such that in no case my do will be falling below 4 ppm in water okay concept is clear so far right i hope you are perfect in do concept see it is not like that let us say i have told you minimum 4 ppm should be present so that my fishes and aquatic life will be happily surviving not like that not exactly like that i said bilkul nahi hai many people think if do is 4.1 it is safe condition plants and aquatic fishes will survive if do becomes even less than that okay 3.99 my fishes will die aisa bilkul nahi hota hai rubbish concept okay so i will show you how the effect will be obviously if the more oxygen is there aquatic life will be happily surviving but as my do value is falling let us say at 20 degree centigrade it should be 9.2 mg per liter but because of organic content it has fallen to uh, 5 or 6 mg per liter then what will happen it will be difficult for this type of bass type of fishes okay different fishes required different there are lot of fishes right there are lot of species of fishes different species required different amount of do levels okay you can clearly see as my do value is fall, falling these animals will get extinct in that water area okay in that water nearby water what is happening as my do value is falling these animals will be getting extinct or in simple language they will be dying okay they will be dying if do is falling below 3 my crab will be dying and so on but most of the fishes right they can survive at 4 ppm 4 ppm that's why we are taking this value okay it doesn't mean just to above that all my aquatic life is safe and just below it all my aquatic life in danger it doesn't mean like that okay you can clearly see right as my do is following these all species go on extinction okay so even at a do is close to one there might be some worm surviving left okay there might be still some worm surviving okay i hope you are getting this point clearly right even if do is falling to that level there might be some life but majority of life will be gone that's why we are taking the minimum value for do as 4 mg per liter if you are allowing anything less then definitely our environment is at risk okay most of the animals most of the animals lies in this zone of 3 to 5 okay if you are falling below 4 definitely most of the species will be at danger now let us see how to calculate this do value and then i will stop okay let us directly see this test so that it will be perfect the test which i am calling for to finding this do right that will be winkler's method or winkler's test so first you will be taking bod bottle see what is bod i will teach you in the next module but bod bottle generally it will be 300 ml you take that bod bottle okay and this what you have to add is manganese sulfate m n manganese sulfate so4 okay just add manganese sulfate so now this is nothing but water wastewater whichever you are having 
plus manganese sulfate plus manganese sulfate now to this add alkali iodide acid okay when i'm talking about alkali light what is it it is nothing but naoh see you need not write the notes everything is clearly given you can clearly see right naoh so alkali is naoh iodide i am talking about potassium iodide so plus ki and what is this azide azide is nan3 azide is nan3 so this is called as my alkali iodide acid i am adding that to, to my manganese sulfate solution theek hai manganese sulfate mein maine ab add kar diya alkali iodide acid remember this term very important and then what you have to do you have to shake it you have to shake it properly now comes the very important statement which i have already made here see after you shake right if there is any white ppt in your bottle okay if this is my bottle 300 mm bottle whatever sorry shape kaafi kharab aaya hai but i hope you are getting it right it is my pod bottle okay if you are seeing white ppt formed right then that means all your dissolved oxygen is gone the do value in this soil sample is zero just write zero your experiment is finished but instead of white if you are getting brown ppt then that means there is some do why i will show you why i will show you see this manganese right it requires oxygen it reacts very quickly with oxygen so when i am having this manganese sulfate when i am having this manganese sulfate let me show you let me show you this equation yeah so when i am having this manganese sulfate which is nothing but mn2 plus it will react better with oxygen so is there any free oxygen here h2o plus mnso4 plus alkali iodide azide reaction okay so there is no o2 right if this water doesn't have any dissolved oxygen then it cannot react with oxygen so what it will react it will react with oh only okay so mn2 plus plus 2 oh what you'll be getting mn oh taken twice mn oh taken twice manganese hydroxide this manganese hydroxide is a white ppt because it is forming it means there is no oxygen therefore uh, you are getting white ppt what will be your do value do value is just straightforward you have to write it is zero okay instead if it is forming brown ppt that means there is some oxygen what is happening let us try to understand if in this water if in this waste water if any do is left then what will happen obviously my mn2 plus it will react with this oxygen okay it will react with oxygen which is present in water so mn2 plus plus 2oh minus plus of o2 it will be reacting with oxygen and i am getting mn2 manganese dioxide this manganese dioxide is in brown color okay is in brown color a bit can be formed what is the color of manganese hydroxide option is uh, white okay right option is white and what is the color of manganese dioxide answer is brown okay if the manganese dioxide is formed that means it has reacted with oxygen right that means free oxygen is available in water that is dissolved oxygen is present in my water now what you have to do is now what you have to do if you are getting brown precipitate in your diagram sorry in your experiment if you are getting brown precipitate then go for further methods to find do value okay or else your do value white ppt experiment is finished white ppt experiment is finished your do value is zero if brown ppt continue the experiment to find what is your do value how to find very simple then just add 1 ml sulfuric acid to it what are you adding you are adding h2so4 see when you are adding h2so4 acidic media see here you have alkali in alkaline medium the ppt was formed the ppt was formed precipitation was formed so when you are adding acid to it what will happen to the precipitate it will again get dissolved common sense ki baat hai okay in alkaline medium precipitate was formed add acid acidic medium ho jayega so whatever precipitate was formed it will be dissolved in again okay so your whatever brown precipitate was there right it will be dissolved in water now again shake it very well okay after shaking it take this uh, take this whatever water right your waste water into such flask and add 1 ml of starch indicator to it okay what are you adding you are adding starch indicator to it so i hope you know this right chote jab se padhte aa rahe ho starch indicator jab bhi add karte ho to water kaun sa color ho jayega blue color ho jayega okay so now your waste water is in blue color i hope you are getting this point now titrate it now titrate it with sodium thiosulfate sodium Na2H2O3 sodium thiosulfate se titrate karna so when you are titrating the color change will be from dark blue to light uh, to clear color or white color then we will be stopping this experiment okay based on this titration value you can calculate and find out what is your do as simple as that okay 
as simple as that let us see whatever i have given here let us see the text one and then i will stop so so far you are clear right so what is the test very simple what is this winkler method step can directly ask in examination take your waste water add manganese sulfate mn so4 and alkali iodide az alkali iodide az is naoh plus ki plus nan3 plus nan3 so now my solution is ready if it is giving me white precipitation do value is zero do value is zero if it is giving brown precipitation only then you have to add h2so4 so that your brown precipitate is dissolved now what you have to do you have to add starch indicator starch indicator after you are adding starch indicator you have to titrate the solution this solution with n by 40 n n for n by 40 that is normality 1 by 40 uh, sodium thiosulfate na2 h2 o3 okay and you based on this titration value you can get your do okay so if bone precipitation came add h2so4 so that you dissolve it and do is measured by titrating n by 40 of na2 h2o3 using starch as indicator okay what will be the color color change color change will be from blue to colorless okay so at this point i am going to stop this module i hope you are perfect so far in this concept of dissolved oxygen in the next module i am going to start very important thing and this wrinkler method right whatever is there right we will study again in BOD experiment okay next module no padne wale hai BOD and this concept will be repeated again so wrinkler is a very important term it is used to find dissolved oxygen okay repeat it 100 times frequently asked bit in small examination for do what is the method you are using modified winkler method modified winkler method use it just pronounce it 100 times so that you will never forget now in the next module i am going to teach you cod thod and bod very important concepts so be ready for next module okay have a nice day see you i hope you will be having a wonderful day